you so far this year. We're winding down. I, the convention's uh, almost over. I feel like a king. Uh, they've treated me extraordinarily well. Um, I, I have someone who helps me basically function at the con. They're uh, super nice. Uh, yeah, it's been it's been wonderful. Uh, great, great guests and great people uh, that I get to have awesome conversations with on my panels. And uh, yeah, the fans are amazing. Yeah, I awesome, awesome. Um, so you were involved with uh, both dubs of One Piece. I was. Um, yeah. So One Piece just celebrated its its twentieth anniversary. So um, I guess if you could just reflect on on what it's been like to be involved with like literally the best selling manga series of all time. Oh wow! Um, uh, so One Piece, I did it for kids. Uh, I did uh, uh, Kuro Marimo and Eyelash the Camel, uh, and then I was. I did like two episodes at Funimation because I was down there visiting, and okay. they're like, "Do you want to do some fun, some some One Piece?" I was like, uh, "Yeah." <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, uh, I mean, it's it's such a crazy show. It's uh, all over the map. I, I don't think any of us actually know what's happening <laughs> from one <laughs> one moment to the next. Um, and I know there was like a lot of people who were critical of the, when it was at Four Kids, um, it, but you know, for me, it was a job, and it was uh, it was a really it was a fun show to be involved with, uh, and and obviously, like I'm I'm lucky that I've been involved with some well known franchises between that and Pokemon and Yu Gi Oh. Right. Um, so yeah, I, I think being involved in something that people recognize that you can say, hey, I played this character. It might have been, you know, it wasn't the lead, but right. here's this character that you know and love that was part of your childhood or, or some part of your life. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a great honor. Right. Really. Awesome. Um, so let's talk about Pokemon. You know, again, sure. an, another series last year celebrated the 20th anniversary of the games. I think the 20th anniversary of the anime was, yeah. was earlier this year. Yeah. I mean, like, the longevity of the series. Like, look, I was eight years old when Pokemon started. Mm. So I was at, like, the prime age to get sucked into it when it first <laughs> happened. Um, can you just sort of reflect on, like, the longevity of that series? Like, what, what do you think it is about Pokemon that makes it still so appealing to new generations of fans after two decades? Uh, what's amazing to me is that now we have people who are parents who have kids who watch Pokemon, and the parents watch Pokemon. Um, I, I It's... Uh, I think the longevity is because it's the, the stories are good, uh, the characters are fun. Um, they they know how to capture an audience, um, but but do so in a way that continues to inspire people. Uh, they've changed over the years. They've they've uh, the the storylines have have changed with the times. Um, and uh, they have, for whatever reason, they have their you know finger on the pulse of something that that isn't going away. Right. Uh, and it's just, I mean, with Pokemon Go, with uh, the movie, the most recent movie, it's just as popular as it was back then too. <laughs> it, I don't see it dying down. It's like a Simpsons or uh, you know anything in the U.S. that's lasted that long. There's not a lot. Right. Um, uh, the longevity, though, I think is yeah, is really due to the fact that there's. Uh, the stories are are well told, and the the characters are well drawn, and I mean literally and figuratively. Right, right. Um, uh, yeah, I I love it, and it's it's um, I'm really privileged to be to be part of it. Awesome. Um, so my first exposure to you, as far as voice acting is concerned, was in a little show known in the United States as Night Hunters. <laughs> <laughs> Or voice cruise, whatever yeah. the hell you want to call voice it. Crates. Oh yeah, um, I was very into that show. Oh um, really? Oh yeah. I the, the, my first Otakon was in two thousand and two, and I cosplayed um, from that show. And of course, I Who cannot. Did you cosplay? I cannot for the life of me remember any of their it better names. Than Omi. It wasn't Omi. My friend, oh. my friend did Omi. I did the tall guy with the the glasses. I think that's Ken or Aya. No, it was the last one that wasn't Ken or I. Oh, no, <laughs> I, I don't like, remember. Ken, I can't remember I, uh, your name. Omi and... And the other guy. I was the oh, other no, guy. Oh, no, I don't <laughs> so, like, Yoji. Yoji. Um, obviously, that was, like, very much a part of, like, the sort of, like, early 2000s anime yeah. boom in the United States. Like, what was it like, like... 
to to observe anime just like suddenly pick up all that steam all at once. Those and, were the days. Yeah, <laughs> those were the days where I could pay my rent just from, <laughs> just from doing voiceover. Um, it's I was I, I yeah I I got started with those series. Right. Um, that's my very first uh, my very first title was called Demon Fighter Kocho. Okay. It was horrible. <laughs> um, and it was it was essentially a hentai, but not quite. Right. Um, it was dirty. It was soft. Let's say softcore. <laughs> um, and I did that with Mike Center Nicholas. Uh, and then he said, "Hey, do you want to audition for this other thing?" So it was uh, that. The next thing was Magic Users Club, uh, which I fell in love with instantly. I was really lucky to be in that. And then Night Hunters started happening while we were about halfway done with with Magic Users Club. Uh, and Mike and I were talking about it last night, and he, his dad had passed away during the casting of Night Hunters. Oh wow! And so he asked. I had all these these connections in the musical theater community in New York. That was my background, and so I cast the whole first DVD of Night Hunters. <laughs> and so I like it's it's like a yearbook when right. I watch it. I'm like, oh, that's Rebecca. That's so and so. And it's it was all my friends. Wow! Uh, and the background roles, uh, like he cast the the four guys. Um, I'd assumed when he told me, you know, it's these guys who by day run a flower shop and by night they're assassins. I was like, oh, yay, they're gay. Yeah. They weren't. <laughs> no. uh, that was disappointing. But boy, did it lead to a lot of weird fan it fiction. sure <laughs> did. sure did. Um, but yeah, that boom, that, that time, you know, 2000, like 2000 to 2004, 2005, mm-hmm. it was nonstop, man. Uh, there was so many, there were so many titles. Uh, and it it's funny because it, it, feels like it teetered off really fast mm-hmm. in like 2006, 2007 when all of a sudden things dried up and the only things they were offering, especially the actors in New York, uh, were hentai, mm-hmm. were, were kind of awful titles <laughs> um, or like old ones they dug up. Okay. So like uh, uh, Pat Labor. Sure. Uh, Pat Labor, Pat Labor. Pat? I, I've always said Pat Labor. Pat, okay. I, I think Pat Labor is what I've heard. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So I did that, and uh, but that you know these random studios would call you, and they had one title. Um, uh, so it, it that boom though that early two thousands boom it was really fun yeah. going to cons and going to my first cons ever, and it's weird to think that I've been going to cons for like eighteen years. That's insane to me. Yeah. But yeah, it was a great time. Super cool. Um, so you mentioned you have a, a really strong theater background. I yeah. guess if you could just sort of discuss that a little bit, because I feel like at an anime convention, people are like, oh, you do Pokemon and, and One Piece and Yu-Gi-Oh! And then like they don't even think about your your actual life theater background. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, the panel I do that I'm doing after this is uh, called Pokemon Musicals and Gay. Okay. Because I'm also gay. Uh, and so my background is I, I moved to New York as an actor. I've been doing musicals since I was 10 years old. Okay. Uh, and I uh, did a lot of, like, off-Broadway, did a lot of uh, concert work uh, and readings of new musicals and got to know great writers in the BMI Musical Theater Workshop. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm, uh, I'm friends with uh, uh, the creator of the composers of Frozen and like all these people who are getting to start their right. start in this tiny room in the middle of Manhattan uh, just testing things out with each other awesome. and, and like they, they called me they, they called me the BMI whore uh, <laughs> because I would go and sing pretty much every week sing these different writers songs uh, and I never said no I was like yes I want to sing your song yes I'll sing your song uh, and it was a blast and a great opportunity to get to know people um, and then someone asked me to put together this concert of, uh, I came up with this idea for this concert of, mm-hmm. of doing uh, new songs by new writers and have big stars sing the songs. And, uh, and they, all of a sudden, people started saying, oh, when are you doing your next concert? When are you doing your next concert? And I, I became known as this guy who does these big Broadway concerts. Awesome. So I did that for about 10 years in New York. Uh, and then I was involved, started getting involved politically and uh, came down to D.C. to help put together a rally to fight Don't Ask, Don't Tell. Awesome. Uh, and handing out flyers at gay bars the night before. Some guy comes up to me. He says, you're not from here, are you? I said, how can you tell? He said, you're carrying a big gay metro D.C. map. I was like, that's a good tell. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, <laughs> he handed out half my flyers, uh, got to know him, and uh, seven years later, now we're married. Awesome. Um, and I live here. So... Okay. <laughs> But that's there's my life story for you. you just have to go to the theater. 
Um, I guess uh, my last question would just have to be, are there any upcoming cool projects you got going on, theater, anime, or otherwise, that you can actually tell us about today? <laughs> uh, not a ton right now. There's a bunch of things that I have like in the works, but okay. there's nothing that's like signed on the dotted line yet. Okay. Um, uh, but yeah, I just, I can, t- I have a, my website is jamiemcgee.me. Cool. Uh, and uh, people can, can follow there. I, I go, go to a lot of cons. Um, But yeah, I just, I like having fun. Cool. (laughs) Love it. Well, thank you so much. Thank you.